This is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to show 195 of Aussie Mac Zone this week. Uh, the crew's back together as normal with Garth and Nick. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello, boys. Yes, hello, Michael. <laughs> hello, Nick. How are you both? Good. And hello, listeners. Yes. So, don't forget, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au with affordable and competitive plans, 99.95% uptime, domain registration, free setup, auto setup, instant activation. The industry sandal C panel starting from five ninety five per month when paid annually with twenty four seven ticket support and friendly help when needed. And um one of my customers signed up with them this week after talking to a couple of different people and they thought Glenn was giving the best response, so that's just an example. But um there you go. a real world example. There you are. So we've got uh, one little story to start, which is, this is Australian based, and when is not a backdoor, just a backdoor? Australia's struggle with encryption. Theconversation.com reported this week, the Australian government wants the ability to read messages and keep um, kept secret by encryption in the name of aiding criminal investigations, which is what they all say. But just how it proposes to do so is unclear. The Australian Attorney General George Brandis recently told Fairfax, at one point or more of that process, access to the encrypted communication is essential for intelligence and law enforcement. And then in an interview with Sky News, he spoke favourably of controversial UK legal powers that seek to impose on device makers and social media companies a greater obligation to work with authorities where a notice is given to them to assist in breaking a communication. Brandis has insisted the government doesn't want a backdoor in secure messaging apps. How then he ex- expects companies to break them is unclear. As many have pointed out, it's hard to see any tool that gives law enforcement privileges access to otherwise encrypted messages as anything else but a backdoor. Now, but let us assume for a moment that the Australian government somehow forces users to use messaging apps that give the government access. While this would impose a minor inconvenience on those wishing to communicate securely, it would do little more. It would be possible to develop a separate encryption app that encrypts the message using digital steganography? Sorry. Yes, steganography. The encrypted message could be hidden within a photo or video file and this could then be sent as an attachment. The government's access to the messaging app would then be moot. And w- and, and that's already been done today, that, that sort of thing. So yeah, of while they may, with some effort, be able to discover the existence of the hidden message in media file attachments, they would still be unable to decrypt the message. And to date, the ideas floated by Australian and British governments on end-to-end encryption could most charitably be described as vague. They would be wise to consult experts to come up with proposals granted in technical reality if they wish to be taken seriously by the technology industry. So I've got a link there to the full read to that article. But um, yeah, when's a backdoor not a backdoor? When it's the laundry door, obviously. They don't, they don't want a back door. They just want the laundry door where they can get the dirty washing out. Yes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> no. no, we don't want an access. We don't want backdoor access. We just want to be able to access it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the hassle is, but there's been so many leaks from, for example, the CIA and the FBI recently with, with things that they'd had back doors in. What, like, what's going on? What can I say? I know what we need to do. We need to just convince all criminals to use Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, of course. How silly am I? There we go. I know, right? It's obvious. I don't know why anyone hasn't seen the solution before now. 
why, why can't we just encrypt, set up a law that says they have to use it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. So um, now we had two articles published this week in Aussie Mac Zone's channel in Apple News. And the first was some basic information about Thunderbolt, courtesy of Belkin's website. Um, which I just had three screenshots, which is like the history of Thunderbolt and some more information about it and a, a cheat sheet so you can um, learn more about it. But as we get, you know, as we know, the new Macs have got Thunderbolt 3 um, through USB-C as an example. So, yeah, there's mm -hmm. some more little background there. Now, the second article uh, was linked to the iOS Today episode about Aussie apps that we talked about in last week's Aussie Mac Zone episode. So just just to keep you on the ball and give you something else to listen Make... to. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, it was a good episode, so take a listen. Yes. Now, the making of the iPhone. News.com.au reports Apple co-founder and chairman Steve Jobs apparently didn't want the company to make the iPhone before it completely revolutionised technology and life, an explosive new book reveals. Mr Jobs, counted among the greatest American chief executives of his generation, was at the helm of Apple when it introduced the iPod, iPhone and iPad. All of these devices were major commercial successes that both reshaped daily life and swamped previous digital music players, smartphones and tablets. But in Brian Marchant's yet-to-be-released book, The One Device, The Secret History of the iPhone, the author claims Mr Jobs was initially extremely reluctant for Apple to make the phones, thinking that it would cannibalise the iPod business. So I suppose it did, <laughs> did eventually, didn't it? <laughs> I think, yes. I think, um, I think we got past that, though, didn't we? Yes. I think um, it seems now that, the, you know... Apple are happy, happy to cannibalise their own products. Yes. I think they've always been happy to cannibalise their own products, haven't they? <laughs> well, well, no, apparently not, according to that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, they did They did try that uh, phone with Motorola where they just had iTunes on the phone. and The Rocker. The Rocker, yeah. yeah. Had one of those until my shop got broken into. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you... You rocked a rocker. There you go. Yeah, I managed to... Not too many people who can say one. that, I don't imagine. <laughs> Not in <laughs> Australia. No. Uh, yeah. So um, I do have a link in the show notes for that one as well. So oh, um, we also have... Now, there's an upcoming Apple Pay shopping event in San Francisco that offers discounts for iPhone-based mobile payments. Apple is holding an event in San Francisco next weekend to promote the use of Apple Pay in stores and restaurants, where there are a number of merchants in two popular shopping areas offering exclusive discounts for customers using Apple's mobile payment platform to pay for goods and services. And that also goes with, um, they reckon Apple Pay will be in 50% of shops by Christmas this year in America. Mm. So, I would have said it was nearly already here, but anyway... Um, in Australia, it would be well, more than 50 <laughs> It'd have to be more than 50%, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's basically, yeah, it, it just works because of the, you know, the terminals we have. Yeah. Now, what about your little story to go so with So, just that? on the Apple Pay story, on the Apple Pay thing, yeah, I had my first experience the other day of Apple Pay on the web. Yeah. So, just at a site now, what, what I think it was Cable Geek. Australia or something like that. Yeah, yep. just buying some new lightning cables. Actually, <laughs> um, they're one of the only. Oh, you know, they had some anchor cables, and you know, yeah, they're one of the Australia distributors for anchor anchor cables. So I was picking up a few of those, and there there was a little button that says, you know, Apple Pay. Um, I hadn't come across it before, and it worked beautifully. Yeah, it's kind of kind of cool experience. You just do you, know, you click the thing, it comes up, pre fills all your shipping and. All that stuff is pre-filled in a little dialogue that, yeah. you know, I guess a bit like the PayPal type thing. Um, I think there was one choice in there I had to make within that dialogue around whether I wanted to pay extra for shipping or not, you know, for faster yeah. shipping. Yeah. 
and click submit and I had this little notification on my phone for the first order and the second order it gave me a notification on the watch <laughs> but um probably due to the beta I wasn't actually able to uh, accept it on the watch yeah but I would say yeah. that's just a beta thing you know it 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 was it sort of the watch was not being very responsive or whatever but um so at that point I just pulled off my watch so that it wasn't you know authenticated yep and um the notification slipped over to my phone and touch id and away you go excellent you get this nice little ting that comes the same little ding noise that happens on your phone and then you know just a second or so later it happens comes from your browser on the on the computer as well yeah and um everything is you know everything goes through it's really cool that's excellent yeah, I think K, Cable Geek, oh, that's run by some women just off the top of my head. I think there's a Cable Cable Geek? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. think... I th well, just... they've implemented Apple Pay. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously clever people who are running it, let alone anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I had did have a problem with the site, and that's probably because I didn't have a proper login, but it could not seem to remember if I had multiple... Like I'd add something to my basket, go off and browse and get something else. Yeah. And my basket would be empty. Only the most recent thing would sit in my basket. <laughs> so there's one little issue I had with the website. But because it was zero shipping, zero cost for shipping, it didn't matter. I just put in three orders. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up trying to add stuff to my basket and just put in three separate orders. Yeah. Now that's good. Hmm. Um, I hope they're listening too so that they know that they do have an issue with their website. <laughs> well, I probably should supply some feedback, shouldn't I? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Um, so I just want to promote Aussie Tech Radio at AussieTechRadio.com. And then, or if you go to AussieMaxZone.com.au, there's a link there to, to the radio station. Uh, just click it and start listening. Uh, there's our Aussie Tech Security Podcast. And of course, our award winning Aussie Tech Heads Podcast. And as I said, um, I did publish some more stuff on our Apple News channel, uh, which is Aussie Max Zone. So you just do a search for Aussie Max Zone and heart us, and away we go. That way you'll get some news totally uh, related to Australia. And yeah, I, if you're not using the news app, give it a bell because it's um, I'm, I'm yeah, really liking it. Yeah. The news app lately. Getting more and more impressed with it. Yes. Yeah, more, as more and more people put new, put information up there, yes. Yeah, yeah. I just like the fact that it's somewhere between an RSS reader and normal news, you know? Yeah, yeah. So with normal news, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you might like the Channel 9 news more than the ABC news or the other way around or whatever. Yeah. But you haven't got any control on your stories. And with RSS, obviously, you pick every website and everything that you want to listen to. Um the good thing with the news app, I find, is it's a nice compromise between those two where you can pick stuff and go and look at that specifically, particular websites. But just in the For You category, it'll pull in stories from, from lots of places that you wouldn't necessarily have gone to otherwise. Yeah, very so, true. Um, yeah. Very true. So we've got um, Apple Beefs Up Unique Video Content Team with a pair of Sony programming directors. Uh Apple has hired Jamie Ulrich and Zach Van Amberg, a pair of former Sony Picture Television executives, previously responsible for programming like Breaking Bad and The Goldbergs. Um, now, they also hired mm -hmm. a, a big name from YouTube as well this week. Um, so there appears to be a bit of a video thing happening in the background. <laughs> yeah, well, with the first episode of, um, what's it called? App Planet, Planet, of, Planet the of the Apps. Yep, yeah, that's out there, isn't it? Yes. Available for watching. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, and enough, and, and no more need to be said about that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> keep going with the story. Well, you've got, you got to be um, an Apple Music subscriber to watch it. So, uh, I think uh, the currently. first episode anyone can watch it, isn't it? How do you watch it if you... If, You've got to sign up to Planet Apple of the Music. Okay, I haven't looked there yet. Uh, I believe was... anyone can watch the first episode. Yeah. Um, but for future episodes, you will need to be a subscriber for Apple Music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not the... that I've tried, but I will. 
Sorry, back to your story. No, no, I'll stop interrupting. I, I do want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I do want to watch it just as a an, an aside to start with. There also um, there's another exclusive they've got coming out in a couple of weeks too to do with um, a guy's music background. I just can't think of the name of the show now. Um, but it's apparently on time as opposed to some of the others that we know about. Um, mm. So I'd just like to say thanks to the Apple Penrith workers who helped me with an iPhone repair last week. Uh, was basically went in, made an appointment f- for that day, went back an hour and a bit later, and then um, gave. they actually needed to take the phone away, so it was another hour a bit later, and I went in and picked it up. Everything was fine. Easy. Very good. So that was... There was a few shows back that I talked about not being able to hear properly and we ended up confirming it was that second microphone issue that we we thought it might have been the one that does the sound cancelling yes because it was in noisy environments only that I I had a problem hearing yeah okay Uh, yeah so So and that was probably six or seven weeks ago we first talked about that so Mm. (laughs) Well, so, fixed now. This is the good thing. It is fixed and beautiful again. Yep. Um, now, I have a reminder that we have talked about it, but uh, just a reminder. So, emergency calls from your Apple Watch. So, when you hold the side button, not the crown, a countdown starts. And if you keep pushing, a call starts and you can talk with an emergency services. The Apple knows what country you're in and will dial the right number. And once you're done with your call, the Apple Watch will send a message to your emergency contacts with a map of your location. Now, Apple is also turning the Apple Watch into a medical ID bracelet. So after your SOS, your watch, your watch will automatically start displaying all the medical details you've entered in the health app of your phone. HealthKit and Apple-enabled apps can also provide data for your medical details. This could be useful if you are unconscious or otherwise unable to tell emergency responders when they arrive Mm. so that was just just that um more information is some some newer things that are available now by the way not not in the next iteration yeah straight away Yeah. yeah um before i do the last little bit any stories about your watch or your phone Oh, not really. I haven't um, come across a few more things that I've heard should be there but aren't quite yet or whatever. Yeah. I tell you, I've, I've never been on a beta where I have been checking every day for, <laughs> for an update. <laughs> <laughs> if you get the opportunity to get onto this beta, don't. Just, <laughs> just stay clear. Yeah. It's a shocker. Um, but, you know, it's first beta. It's fine. It's, it's what you expect. So I've, had a, I've put in a couple of little reports <laughs> excellent i think yeah so we'll we'll see where we go though and i'll I'll get some feedback when we get a little bit uh little things a little bit more stable maybe <laughs> yeah yeah well i can't wait for the public beta as i said so i can put on my ipad pro um yes but even with the public betas of 10.3 because there's been a few few of those pushed through lately even they've had some still had some issues um with apps not keeping up i think so. Yeah. Well, look, look, we, and that's the thing you need to remember. Yeah, the 10.3 public betas are there, but public betas, developer betas, whatever, they have betas. Yeah, and that's the right. The reason they're there is so that people can check them and test them and find the bugs because there are bugs. Um, and the more phones and various configurations they throw it at, the more likely they're going to come across some specific set of conditions that, that cause you know, a causes challenge. a problem. Yeah. So, yeah, never whinging about... Um, about the experience it's it's, yeah, no, it's what no. it's about if yeah. i've got beta it's on my shoulders not on anyone else's <laughs> exactly that's yeah. right <laughs> and, and just a, another reminder is you can use siri to change settings on your mac so if you don't feel too much of a blonga talking to your mac you can use siri to quickly make changes to your settings save time by using siri rather than going through the sift and preferences menu and searching for the setting you require so activate Siri by pressing command spacebar and then 
say increase brightness and Siri will brighten your display for you or turn on Bluetooth to switch on the Bluetooth chat or try asking how much space is left to find out how much storage you still have available. Oh, really? <laughs> I haven't, you know, do you feel a plonker talking to your Mac? No. Nah. Okay. I don't feel a plonker talking to my phone or to my watch either. <laughs> I don't either with my phone. I do a bit with my watch sometimes, <laughs> but I just have not got around. I haven't got into the habit of using Siri on the Mac. Well, it's just one of those habit things, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Like, so tw- check the amount of storage. That's something I'm always jumping in to find out, checking the status. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I had to answer uh, my phone twice today using my watch because my phone was upstairs and I was downstairs. Um, so... They both yep. generated income for me, so I was quite happy for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and um, because I'm I'm a home kit fiend, mate, I tell you, I just go um, hold Siri on my watch and say uh, turn turn main light on to eighty percent, or turn main light off, or turn the front door light on, or turn the front door light off. Um, okay. And even now, <sighs> now that I've got my um, electric blanket on the bed connected to HomeKit, I can turn the blankets on just by talking to my watch while I'm downstairs. All right. Tell me, Michael, have you got, what are you using for the PowerPoint? Uh, Wemo thing? switches. Is that what you mean? Okay. So I've got a Wemo switch so. in between power and the electric blanket. Yeah, and and then you've got to remember to to say set them on three, but turn the power off in the morning, or set them on two and turn the power off. What's that? You you don't like most people have their electric blankets turned off. Oh, I see what you're on, saying. On the controller, yeah. yeah, 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 right. yeah so okay. you got to. Put power on on the controller, but I'm turn the Wemo off. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about um, these electric blanket things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Queen no, Lena. what I'm yeah. <laughs> what I mean is, um, so the Wemo switches that you're using are they? So officially, they're not home kit, but I run a another app on a Mac. Yes, yeah, that's which right. makes them okay. home kit compatible. But yep. I've also approached. Belkin, which is the Wemo distributor in Australia, sent them an email this week asking for a demo as soon as it's available of the uh, Wemo hub that makes everything that's not HomeKit compatible compatible. That's oh, they've announced, but is this a thing that's coming? Is it? That's okay. something that's coming. Yes. So that makes See, this everything. This has been my pl- Yeah, go on. Sorry. I was going to say this has been my my. Another holdout that I've had for HomeKit for adopting any kind of HomeKit stuff. Yeah. The main thing I want is a switch, you know, wall switches. That's that's the main yeah. thing I can envisage using it for. But until now, there hasn't been any that I know of um, Australian spec plugs for that. Without doing something like you're doing, where you've do, you know, you've got to run another thing on another device, some sort of workaround, basically. Yeah. 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 So if Belkin do bring out a hub that makes all their switches HomeKit compatible, then that will be pretty cool. Yeah, well, that, that lets me control my... Uh, I also use Wemo for my lights. Um, so that will make everything HomeKit compatible. Um, the other thing is IKEA are bringing out lights this year that are HomeKit compatible. Yes, yeah. As well. And they should be a lot cheaper than than possibly what you're used to paying because they're basically a half to a third the price for the LED, Wi-Fi LEDs. So, Right, okay. Well, we'll see, I guess. Yes, and I've also (laughs) asked for a demo for those too. (laughs) (laughs) Ask away. Yep. Yeah, because I love HomeKit. I love just talking to my watch and turning the lights on. Okay. Call me a, call me a plonker, call me a wanker, whatever you like, but I do it. <laughs> Nick, what do you what do you reckon, mate? I think it's perfectly normal. 
<laughs> Good call. Good call. <laughs> You're within arm reach, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure my um, home pod will be able to do it at Christmas as well. I know. That's going to be a pretty exciting Christmas, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll still have enough money to buy one after the um, <laughs> Aussie dollar and stuff. <laughs> you can, we can only hope that the Australian dollar improves a bit between now and then. <laughs> yes. So, that's that's what I've got this week. Anything else? No, mate. I, I, there's not a, not a heap going on. No. I think everyone's still doing WWDC follow-up. And yes. Rightly so. There's been so much stuff there that... <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot, um, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. 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 I think the one... St- the, uh, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I was just going to say, I don't know that I remember that I reminded people this... I might have reminded people of this last week, but anyway, the WWDC app, make sure you download it and check out some of the sessions. They've got a lot that are featured, um, ones that they, you know, they feature and are good to listen to. And... Um, they are, they, you know, even though they're at a you know developer audience, some of them are, are pretty cool to watch. So yes, I think I watched a little one on um, audio design, sound design, which was really cool, and the state of the union, and yeah, just uh, check out the WWDC app, whether it's on your Apple TV or your phone or your iPad, whatever, and um, just check out some of the sessions. Yeah, the state of the union is is basically a, a bit more developer based. Um, hmm, absolutely, and just gives you more of a background of what's happening. So yeah, it's important. Yeah. And another thing that um, that I haven't mentioned, uh, Tim Cook did an interview uh, late last week regarding the uh, Apple Automotive side of things. Ah, oh, yes, we uh, should have had that story in there, shouldn't we? Yeah, but um, yeah. He was just saying that they're coming and they're working away and basically that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the first official? I mean, we've had lots of things that have indicated very strongly that they're working yeah, on. Yeah, that, that was the first <laughs> official admittance. Announcement, yeah. yeah or announcement. You know, we've had that uh, California motor transport approval for yes. testing cars and things, but this is the first time Apple have actually said... Yeah, this is something we're working on. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think my Tesla will be here long before any of that is. <laughs> we'll see, though. That's because you're in the sunshine state. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Garth. No worries, Michael. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thanks, guys. Thank you.